Welcome to part 2 of section 1.1. Again, our text is Discrete Mathematics and Its Applications by Kenneth H. Rosen, 7th edition. Today, we are looking at converse, contrapositive, and inverse. The statement P implies Q or if P then Q. We can derive from that the converse. The converse would be Q implies P. And I should just go ahead and tell you that the conditional statement P implies Q is actually very different from the converse Q implies P. If it is sunny today, then I'll go out and play soccer. That is different from if I go out and play soccer, then it's sunny today. The next is the contrapositive. The contrapositive of P implies Q is not Q implies not P. And the contrapositive is exactly the same as the statement P implies Q. And we shall use truth tables to verify that equivalence. Next will be the inverse. The inverse of P implies Q is not P implies not Q. And I should also say that P implies Q and its inverse are not the same. The only two that are the same are the conditional statement and its contrapositive. Okay, example number one. Find the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of the following conditional statement. It is raining is a sufficient condition for my not going to town. It is raining is a sufficient condition for my not going to town. Remember, this is an alternative way of writing P implies Q. Then the converse would be, if I do not go to town, then it is raining. The inverse would be, if it is not raining, then I will go to town. And the contrapositive would be, if I go to town, then it is raining. The contrapositive is the same as the original conditional statement. Now, what about the biconditional? The conditional P implies Q. So if I go the other direction, it will be Q implies P. And if I put both together, it would be the biconditional statement. And we represent that by P if and only if Q. Or we say P is a necessary and sufficient condition for Q. Now, recall that for the conditional statement, the only time it was false was when we had T implies F. So since we are going P implies Q, Q implies P, you see that T implies F would be F. And then if I'm going the other direction, T implies F would also be F. So the truth table would be T implies F would be F and T implies F would be F. So T if and only if T is true, T if and only if F is false, and F if and only if T is false, and F if and only if F is true. Okay, that's very easy to see. So here we're looking at T implies F. That would be F. Here we're looking at T implies F, since it's going both ways. Now, if P denotes I am at home, and Q is it is raining, then P if and only if Q would be I am at home if and only if it is raining. There are several ways to express P if and only if Q, just as we did with the conditional statement. And some of those would be P is necessary and sufficient for Q. Or we can say if P then Q and conversely. Or we just say P I F F Q. This I F F also means if and only if. is a short form of if and only if. Now let's look at some compound propositions and how we can construct truth tables for these compound propositions. Firstly, the rows. We need a row for every possible combination of values for the atomic propositions. Secondly, the columns. We need a column for the compound proposition, usually at far right. We need a column for the truth values of each expression that occurs in the compound proposition as it is built up, and this concludes the atomic propositions. Well, that's a lot of sophisticated sentences, so let's go ahead and break that down. Example, we want to construct the truth table for this compound proposition. We have one, two, three different propositional variables. That means we would have how many truth values in a column? Two raised to the power three, which is eight and divide it evenly. So we do it this way. We start with P. We have four 
T, T, T. Then we go to F. We have four of those. Then we go to the next, P. It will be T, T, F, F, T, T, F, F. Then we go to R. T, F, T, F, T, F, divided evenly. If you go through all of these, you realize that we have all the eight possible combinations you can get from three propositional variables. True, 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 false, true, false, true, true, false, 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 true, true, false, true, false, 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 true, false, false, false. It's a lot easier if you arrange it this way. So what do you think? If we have four different propositional variables, how would it look like? I'll leave that for you to play with. Now, let's look at each expression we have here. So we have P, that's it. We have Q, that's it. We have R, that's it. Now we have not R, okay? So we do not R, so we have a column for not R. What else? We have P or Q. We have a column for P or Q. Then we have a final column that has the entire compound proposition. So this is what we meant when we wrote up here that we need a column for the truth value of each expression that occurs in the compound proposition as it is built up, and this includes the atomic proposition. And this is what we meant when we said we need a column for the compound proposition, which is usually at the far right. So right here is our compound proposition. What is given is at the far right. So we start off, we have our 8, 8, and 8. Once these are done correctly, all you have to do is pick a column. So we start with not R. So right here we have T, not T is F, not F is T, not T is F, and we get all the truth values on this column. We go to the next column. The next column is P or Q. So we have P, Q. So true or true, that is true, true or true, that is true true or false that is true and so on and so forth you have to remember the rule or is false if and only if both are false otherwise it will be true now we have our not r is done we have p or q is done so we do p or q implies not r and we recall that p implies q or the conditional statement is false if and only if we have false implies true so we start off, the very first one is true, and now we recall that the conditional statement is false if and only if we have true implies false. So the very first line here, we have T implies F, so that is F. We have T implies T, that is T, T implies F, that is F, and we go next, T implies F is right here, so that will be F, and everything else would be true so right here this is the conclusion that is our final column and we consider these the truth table for the compound proposition p or q implies not r it doesn't matter how sophisticated the compound proposition would be just follow the principle one step at a time and you'll be done okay now i did say something when we looked at the converse, the contrapositive, and the inverse, I used the word equivalence. So what are equivalent propositions? Two propositions are equivalent if they have the same truth value. The columns representing truth values would have to be the same. So using a truth table, I want you to verify that P implies Q is equivalent to its contrapositive not q implies not p so let's look at this again how many different propositional variables do we have one two so that will be four truth values again divided evenly true true false false true false true false okay what are the atomic units we have here we have not q we have not p then we have not q implies not p and we have p implies q so let's make a column for each of these, so we have P and Q, then we have not P, then we have not Q, then we have P implies Q, and then we have not Q implies not P. We expect at the end of the day that these two columns would have to be the same. Their truth values would have to be the same. If that is not the case, then equivalence does not hold. If it's the same, then we can conclude that these two propositions are equivalent 
equivalent. And if you follow the rule, this is P, not P, so not true will be F, and so on and so forth. This is Q, and not true would be F, and so on and so forth. Then we go on to P implies Q. Again, recall that P implies Q is only false when we have true implies false. Otherwise, it is true. And then we do not Q implies not P. Again, it will be false if and only if we have true implies false. And we come up with this conclusion. And we can see that the truth values in this column is exactly the same as the truth values in this other column. So we can conclude that P implies Q is a equivalent to not Q implies not P. In other words, a conditional statement is equivalent to its contrapositive. Permit me to jump ahead and inform you that when we start dealing with proofs, you will discover that it may be easier to use the contrapositive instead of the original conditional statement to prove the statement that is given. Now, we know how to show that two propositional statements are the same using truth tables. Can we also show that two propositional statements are not the same by using truth tables? Yes. All we have to do is construct the truth tables and show that they are not equivalent. They are not the same. So again, when we did introduce the converse, the inverse, the contrapositive, I did say that the contrapositive was the same as the original conditional statement, but the converse and the inverse were not. So let's go ahead and verify that. So we have P, we have Q, we have not P, not Q, and here is our original conditional statement, P implies Q. Here is the inverse, not P implies not Q, and here is the converse, Q implies P. And if we perform the operations as we've done before, you will realize that this column is T, F, T, T, and none of these columns are exactly T, F, T, T. So that means the statement, the conditional statement is different from the inverse, and it is also different from the converse. But guess what? The converse and the inverse are equivalent. In other words, Q implies P is the same as not P implies not Q. Can you see here very easily that the inverse is just the contrapositive of the converse? Interesting. Problem. How many rows are there in a truth table with n propositional variables? I already informed you. It will be 2 raised to the power n. Now, note that this means that with n propositional variables, we can construct 2 to the n distinct, not equivalent propositions. Okay, just as in algebra, we dealt with PEMDAS, here also we have precedence of logical operators. The first is the not, and, or implies, and then double implication. And when necessary, we include parentheses. Okay, so for example, P or Q implies not R. If I just tell you P or Q implies not R, in your understanding, that means I'm dealing first with P or R because R has precedence over implication. Then I'm dealing with not R together because not has precedence. Okay, so that would be P or Q, all of that in parentheses, implies not R. But if actually I mean to say P or Q implies not R, then I have to put this in parentheses so that this will be evaluated first. In other words, I'm going to evaluate Q implies not R and then I take it together with P. So the truth tables would have very different values on their columns. And that brings us to the end of section 1.1. And after this, we will move on to section 1.2, applications of propositional logic. Thank you very much. God bless you. And I will see you in section 1.2.